Hey everyone, this is Connor McBride here for First Updates Now. I am at Battle Cry at 23 at WPI, checking in with Team 1740 Cyber Colonels out of Ledyard, Connecticut. I'm with Noah, Ben, and Ronan. We're gonna dive into this awesome charged up robot, very unique arm intake, ground intake. We're gonna cover it all right here, right now, on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Get your off-season events an additional 25 to 100% more viewership by streaming it on fun. We'll donate our Twitch or YouTube channel and help promote your event. Contact admin at firstupdatesnow.com to reserve your off-season date. So we're gonna dive immediately. Uh, we're actually gonna start off with, uh, with the ground intake. We're just kind of work all the way through our robot. So if you wanna go talk about that, uh, let's, break, let's start off this interview. So first thing, we like to use these little handles here to help us bring our robot onto the field and off the field. And we'll use this to just quickly turn the robot. All right. If you wanna hold it. Right. And for our ground intake, we decided to use Nice polycarbonate intake, nice and flexible, it can take some hits. And we originally were inspired by the Everybot intake, and we did have a, an opposing roller at the top to intake cones. We didn't really use the ground take for cones, we mainly used use it for cubes. So we took it off and just we just have a one cube roller. In here we have a double-sided belt to help ease the, the rotation of these axles. We didn't really want to use gears, so we found this to be significantly easier. And for the actuation, we just use some six inch um, pneumatic actuators. And I'll get out of the way so we can actually actuate it. So we use a, uh, a little cam right here with some polycarbonate around it and that helps us um, take the force of the actuators up and over the pivot instead of having a lot of the force being directed into the pivot and these are all 3d printed parts right here it was really it really helps with manufacturing these oddly shaped parts and it's a big part of what we do as a team Thank you so much. I really love the way that they have their intake here. These Lexi, like, these polycarbonate uh, hard stops there, the uh, 3D printed cam, very unique way of actuating this intake. And what you don't really see, um, you know, here with 1740, they have a very wide acquisition intake, not something you really saw a whole lot uh, throughout most teams in the charge up season. Uh, we're going to uh, move along to our intake and the uh, telescoping arm. Talk a little bit more about that here. Yeah, so as part of our uh, game strategy this year, we wanted to be able to pick up off of the shelf and place um, on the high, middle, and low levels. And so we were inspired by um, the pink arm, um, which is what we went with this year. Um, we drive it with um, two, Nero, two Neos. Um, it's chain driven. And then for our extension, we use a uh, rack and pinion. Um, so. Our rack is 3D printed, um, and so is Opinion. And then for the claw, uh, we printed the claw out of Tough PLA, and uh, we added some angles inside, cut into the uh, model so that we could have a claw set at two positions, one to intake cubes and one to intake cones. Um, and we went with wheels so that we could play with more of a touch it, own it, uh, game strategy when picking up. Perfect. Really awesome, unique design. Like we've seen a lot of telescoping arms, but we haven't really seen a whole lot of robots that actually have their arm like pivot from the back of the robot, pick up from one side and score everything from the back side. So very interesting design that you guys had this year. I don't know. We want to move a little bit more into our software aspect of the of the team and the robot. So we're going to hand this off to you. We want to talk a little bit more about the software than all the controls that go into this robot. Um, yeah, so this year, our, our, whole, so our whole software team uh, started coding this year. And so a lot of us 
aren't very experienced, but we knew from the start, beginning of the season, we wanted to focus on making our controls as easy to use as possible for the driver. And so uh, we focused on getting our PID tuning fast and smooth. And so you can, if you want to show the, do, do a cone high. And the goal of the controls is the co-driver just presses and holds the button to hold the arm in the position. And when they let go, it'll automatically retract and stow the arm. And there's also, we also have two modes uh, for cone and cube, and there's two buttons for that as well. One other thing that uh, a lot of you might not know about 1740 is that they do a lot of 3D printing on this robot. Uh, you can come over here and take a look at here on this table, like all the awesome different pieces. And Noah, do you want to talk a little bit more about uh, your 3D printing on the robot? What kind of what kind of materials you guys are using, and what kind of like aspects of the robot? Yeah. So with this, we use a lot of our like tougher manufacturing is just solved by 3D printing. So for mounts on our actuators, we could have modeled a, or we could have man manufactured a pretty rigid piece of aluminum, but we went with a more simple, just thing that we made out of plastic. So this is, I think this is, I don't actually know. Is it like the polycarbonate? Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like polycarbonate filament. And then for our rack and pinion, we could have used like a really hard to machine like single piece but we did that with 3d printing instead so we've got a nice long rack that was printed on like a belt at printer with a infinite z-axis so it can be one single part and function the same as an aluminum one and then this is one of our rollers that we put on the ground intake it's got some nice grooves cut into it for easy compression and like compliantness and then this is one of our arms for the claw it's got some nice lightweight features about it nice and min minimal not a lot of infill nice it's easy to model motor mounts into it and it's easy to use Yeah, so the reason we went with uh, so much uh, 3D printing this year was because we have minimal machining capabilities um, in our shop. And so 3D printing allows us to make parts we wouldn't be able to make otherwise. Um, and then we also use 3D printed parts for templating when we are working on a part that um, we can't 3D print. Um, and then the 3D printing also helped make our claw a lot lighter um, so that um, RCG is lower uh, when we're going to extend up to the high node. Sure. Um, our whole robot isn't tipping. Awesome. Thank you so much. Once again, guys, 1740 Ledyard Cyber Kernels, absolutely amazing robot. Up and coming team since they started off here in the in there when they got their first event win in the 2020 season. Uh, nothing but success from them this year. Uh, really awesome machine, awesome innovative 3D printing. You can catch them one more time this year in the charge up season at the Connecticut State Championship later on at the end of June. Guys, thank you so much and good luck next year and first crescendo. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. Head on over to SolidWorks.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.